Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He appeared first to the women, then to Peter, then to many of the apostles, and he continued to meet with them over a span of 40 days, eating with them and teaching them. Grace to you and peace during this Easter season as we continue to celebrate. The scriptures today revolve around the theme of the Good Shepherd, thus some of the backgrounds that I have chosen for today. And for the remaining backgrounds, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we are observing Native American Ministries Sunday. This is one of the six observances with special offerings held by all United Methodists everywhere. Many have observed it already this year, last week, but regardless of when we observe it, the intent is to remind United Methodists of the gifts and contributions made by Native Americans to our society. We willingly admit a gap in knowledge exists in the United Methodist Church and congregations and other United Methodist entities. We don't really comprehend Native American life and cultures and languages and spirit and values and contemporary issues and so forth. We continue to learn, and we wish to continue, through raising awareness this day. We hope to be more affirming of the sacredness of American Indian people, their languages, their cultures, their gifts to the church and to the world. And to that end, an offering is received on this special Sunday to support vital ministries and churches in the Native American communities and allow the United Methodist Church to partner with existing Native ministries to develop new programs on behalf of Native Americans. If you would like to contribute to this work, it is possible to make a designated donation to the church, and we will forward those funds appropriately. Or you can make a donation online by going to resourceumc.org, or alternatively, you can find the donation site by searching for UMC Native American Ministry Sunday. Some of our liturgy today is drawn from Native American spiritual traditions. As shared to open this video, Amazing Grace has been translated into several Native American languages, and verses are printed in our hymnal. And the closing hymn of this video comes to us from the Dakota Nation. The author was half Native American and a congregational minister. This hymn was sung by 38 Native American prisoners of war as they were marched to their execution in 1862. The tune was published in 1879. I invite you to join me in praying. Great Mystery, Teach me how to trust my heart, my mind, my intuition, my inner knowing, the senses of my body, the blessings of my spirit. Teach me to trust these things so that I may enter my sacred space and love beyond my fear and thus walk in balance with the passing of each glorious sun. We continue to read from Acts chapter 2 this week. In those early days of the church, people everywhere were filled with wonder because God's Spirit was with the apostles doing miracles and proving that the kingdom of God really was at work among them. And those who believed Jesus was the Messiah were unified, working together, collaborating on everything. Everyone did everything they could to support the work God was doing. Possessions were sold, and the proceeds shared with any who had a need. Much of their time was spent in the temple, and then they met in homes to share meals together in joyful generosity. And everywhere they went, their words were in praise of God. And everywhere they went, people liked them. Nobody was talking trash. And God continued to work to cause the early church to grow in numbers. I suspect you know Psalm 23 pretty well, and you may even know some versions of the hymn of Psalm 23. What may be a little less known is that Psalm 23 really is a poem. It use, uses poetic language, figures of speech, and sometimes those figures of speech 
we have translated very literally, woodenly, and we kind of miss the, um, the nuance of them. For example, the psalm speaks of still waters. Another way of translating that is waters of rest or restful waters. Uh, he restores my life is another way of saying he restores my soul. Nefesh in Hebrew means life as well as soul. Uh, he leads me in right paths or leads me in paths of righteousness. Same meaning. Um, the valley of the shadow of death. That is poetic imagery. The darkest valley. The, the worst place you could imagine being. We might think of folks in Ukraine presently. They're going through the valley of the shadow of death. Other places in the world are experiencing such deep shadows too. Um, there are several places where the psalm has such turns of phrase, and I invite you to do comparative work. Look not only at your favorite translation, which may be the King James, but look at other good English translations, uh, even good English paraphrases. The, um, the hymn, as we have it, is one paraphrase, and I think you, you probably know it pretty well. We continue also to read from 1 Peter chapter 2. If someone is suffering unjustly, in God's eyes their persistence is praiseworthy. If you take a beating for doing wrong, well, some would say you had it coming. But if you take a beating for doing what is right, God notices with approval your persistence. This is really why we're here. Christ suffered for us and set an, an example for us to follow. He never transgressed. He was a person of full integrity. He never returned evil for evil, never promised retribution. He simply trusted God to see and then to do what is just. He carried the weight of our evil, even to death on a cross, in order to change our course of life. His wounds have brought about our healing our restoration to righteousness. 
we had been as wayward as any fool sheep but now we've returned our guardian and guide will be our faithful shepherd and from john chapter 10 the author tells us once jesus used this parable but nobody understood what he was trying to say jesus said you know the truth of it shepherds use the gate to reach the sheep now the rustler he cuts the fence in order to steal the flock a gatekeeper knows the owner of the sheep the sheep know the voice of the owner the owner knows each sheep intimately and they follow him because they know him sheep scatter when a stranger enters the field and the sheep don't heed the voice of strangers now realizing they were missing his point jesus tried again he said okay then think of it like this i'm the gate others are pretenders sheep rustlers predators the sheep pay no attention to them since i'm the gate i keep the sheep safe through me the sheep will go out to find pasture predators are destructive i give life real life the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god again i invite you to join me in praying O great spirit whose voice i hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world hear me i need your strength and wisdom let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever hold to the red and purple sunset make my hands respect the things you've made my ears sharp to hear your voice Make me wise so that I may understand the things you've taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Help me remain calm and strong in the face of all that comes toward me. Help me find compassion without empathy overwhelming me. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes, so that when life fades as the fading sunset, my spirit may come to you without shame. Amen. Given the epistle lesson today, I thought that was an especially appropriate prayer. To learn more about Native people and the United Methodist Church, you might like to read the 2016 Book of Resolutions, paragraph 3321 or Resolution 3321. It can be easily found um, with a search engine online with the search terms Book of Resolutions 3321. We close with the Dakota hymn that I mentioned at the very start, and I have an English paraphrase of the Dakota lyrics as well. I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm.